He was called the Elvis of bad boy chefs. And back in 2002, Anthony Bourdain sat right here in this very seat inside Toronto's Senator Restaurant. He was here posing for a picture that was going in McLean's. Now today we caught up with photojournalist Peter Bregg, who took this picture of a young Bourdain who was just on the brink of international acclaim. You wake up this morning, you hear the news, you pull out that photo, that portrait you took in 2002. What goes through your mind? Well, I, I was surprised at how young he looked in that picture because he was only 45 then. He was so quiet that morning. We were having coffee at the Senator, uh, right near City TV, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, a very brief conversation. You know, it was most, for me, it was mostly technical. What's the light? Focus. And, uh, but then over the years, the last 16 years, he was just starting out then. That's why we did a story for McLean's Magazine. Plus, he had just come out with a book the year before. And so he was starting to get some notoriety. But only in the last 16 years since then has he really become uh, the guy we know. And you became a fan through the years. Yeah. How does hearing the news impact you today? Well, it, you know, if, if you just... We're inundated. I watch his CNN and uh, once in a while, and uh, I, uh, we're inundated with that smiling face of his. Of course, you always feel a bit of a kinship to people if you photograph. I'm sure when you interview people, you remember them for years. It, it, it's tragic. What does that photo say to you about Anthony Bourdain in that moment, in that time? Yeah. He, he was a different Bourdain then than he is today, or was prior to this, uh, because he was very quiet that day. Uh, you know, he, on, on television now when he does his programs, uh, he is so relaxed, so outgoing, and so happy to be where he is. Uh, and that, that's what really threw a lot of people, is that the persona you saw on television was not what happened today. And so that, that's a greater shock. Uh, the news of his passing has shocked fans across the world, and it's left many with more questions than answers. Now, sadly, Bourdain is the second high-profile person to die by suicide this week. Both designer Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, they both had daughters. And as difficult as this news is for many of us to digest, it's even harder for those who feel they've been left behind by a parent who's decided to take their own life. Her intention was to spare me, if you know, if that makes any sense. And it doesn't make sense because even 30 years after the fact, there's never been one second uh, where I thought she made the right decision. Corrine McDermott was just 17 years old when her mother, who battled mental illness, took her own life. It doesn't matter if you understand that they thought that they were doing the right thing by you. Um, you'll never feel that way, ever. McDermott carries the suicide note her mother left her everywhere she goes in this Kate Spade wallet. Following the designer's alleged suicide this week, McDermott took to Facebook and wrote this emotional blog on parents who kill themselves and the children they leave behind. The post has now been shared thousands of times and it outlines the heartbreaking feelings children are left to grapple with. You weren't strong enough to help them. You know, you weren't smart enough to fix the problem. And ultimately that you weren't enough to stay for. And, you know, you can rationalize someone's actions until you're blue in the face, but those feelings never go away. Statistics Canada shows that from 2011 to 2015, the number of suicides in Canada has steadily risen. Clinical psychologist Dr. Caddy Kamkar says it could be linked to a variety of factors. We have noticed an increase in terms of uh, mental health, uh, mental health and, and addiction for a variety of reasons, really, uh, because of the increase in life expectancy and aging population. Lots of people hear the news today, and it's someone they might not have known personally, though it still impacts them. It shows how, you know, we need to reach out to one another. We need to be kind to one another. We need to listen to one another, and we need to be there for one another. I think we need to unite. That's what it is. If someone's at home watching tonight, uh, another parent who, who's struggling with their own mental illness, they have kids at home, they have family, they have loved ones, what would your message be to them? The help is there seek out and find whatever support is available to you. Uh, don't, don't for one second think that your kids would be better off without you. And if you don't have any family or family that you can call, Dr. Caddy Kamkar says it's important that you realize you are not alone. If you need to speak with someone, please call 416-408-4357 or dial 911.